Good day, everyone. Today's a follow-up to the SPSS series, and this one's going to focus primarily on the incident date field. If you've seen what I've done in Excel, I'm just going to show you how you can do it in SPSS and pull out or extract, for the most part, extractions, the key points here. If you want the day of the week, the year, the month, even the time or the hour that you want to work with. From a crime analysis standpoint, we oftentimes look at this for variation, seasonality, patterning, based on all of those. If you want to get into a pivot table, we'll do that eventually within SPSS. But for now, still introducing what all SPSS can do and kind of just the basic introduction to some of the different parts. I'll cover these as they progress in time. And again, not my main program that I oftentimes use, but it's good to be familiar with different programs with pros and cons to each one. So with that, let's get started. The data in front of you is the same one that I've used in a lot of videos in the first video in this series. It's the Little Rock crime data brought in from Excel. And I still have the syntax up that I used to open the data. So I have that up here to where I pulled that in from an Excel worksheet and I have it as my crime data. I also have a note here for what we'll cover today, the date and time extractions. With that, if you see here, anytime I have that asterisk in the front then follow it with anything, it's essentially a note that's left in our syntax editor. Get in the habit of that so you know if you're coming back to it, what you're looking at, what you did at that point in time. But if we're back in the data, if we're looking at the data itself, we're in the data view. What we did not cover in the week one or first video, I should say, is variable view. So if you look down here in the left hand corner, we actually have variable view. We'll come back to this more when I bring in other data sets. Even when I work with it in here today, I'll come back to it. This is really the descriptives of what's going on in each data field. Today, like I said, we're gonna be working with incident date. When this read into SPSS, it identified it as a date and set it as such. You can see in here, you have very different or different types of variables that you can work with from numeric comma to dollar in your currency to string and the date. And it picked up the date and time field. That's helpful for what we're working with today. You also get into labels that most of our data here did not come in with a label. These don't really mean much here. So we'll get into how you can create labels as you extract or code as this series progresses. We also have different types of measures. So think about your research methods or introduction to stats, your levels of measurement, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. All of that's in here. SPSS is pretty good at identifying the type based on the information or the actual data points within each variable itself. So we'll come back to variable view here in a little bit. Just understand it is here. You can create variables in here as well. You can type them in fairly straightforward. But when we're in data view, similar to Excel, if you want to change the width of your columns, no different here. So if you want to get into that to have your own preference, by all means, have at it. But for now, our interest is in this date field here. And primarily, I want to extract some of this information. So with that, let's walk through the steps to do that. In the video following this one, we'll get into some of the descriptives, more so the frequency side and how to pull that and run it. But for now, keep in mind we had these top tabs up here from where you can save it as you progress. Data will end up using a lot of time and effort and just given what we'll be using SPSS for, but we also has transform. And I like this one because it has a date and time wizard, which makes it a lot easier for the user to extract some of this information. There's other functions that SPSS will do for you. As you see here, it walks you through, what do you want to do with this date field? You can do calculations from it. You can create from it. Our purposes though, for today is we just want to extract out some of these fields. We didn't want to know the specific year, the month, the day, the day, the week, and the hour. This is just to get you in the habit of extracting parts of a date or a field into now different variables or columns within SPSS. In Excel, we had different commands that we could do or use to pull this out, walking through those same steps here. So we're going to do this a couple different times to show you what this looks like in the syntax as well. So we're going to click next. We're going to use our incident date field. And the first one, we truly just want to extract the year. So we're going to do next going to type this as year. And this is where you have the option to put in a variable label. So this is almost a descriptive, a note to tell you what this variable is. With that, we have this is year of incident date, keeping that there. And for now, I'm just going to get in the habit of pasting this into my syntax window. 
click finish. So nothing at this point has been made or ran, no new variable has been created. We pasted that into our syntax, which we'll run here in a second. With that, we're gonna do this a couple different times, same way, come down to extract, click next, insert our incident date. This time we're gonna change it to month, click next. We're just labeling this month, month of incident date. Paste this into our syntax, finish. We'll do this two more times. We're gonna change it up on this one though. We're gonna extract again, incident date. And if we scroll down though, now we have the option, I want day of the week. So I'm gonna put that in here, hit next, day. And if you notice when I have day and I put in a space, it takes out the option to finish here. So similar to other types of programs, it doesn't like when you insert spaces. So oftentimes if you see a lot of my file types, when I save it, I automatically put an underscore in. So day of week, day of week for incident. You do notice that when you have the variable label, it does allow you to have spaces in there. It's in the actual variable name. And I would say getting the habit of shorter variable names is somewhat helpful if you're writing this yourself but do something that you remember and it's consistent throughout say different projects and data sets. It makes it easier for you just to remember. Finish this one. And the last one we'll get into is our hour. So again, we're gonna extract from our incident date field. And this time we just want the hour itself and it's hour. So hour of incident, paste this into syntax, finish. And you'll notice at the end, we don't have any of these fields yet. When I run this in the syntax, we're gonna have all of these added in. So you can see here, I created the note at the top of what I was doing here. So we have the year, we have the month, we have the week, and we have the hour. And it creates a nice little note for you as well. What I'm gonna do is highlight these four here, come up to the play button and hit run. And when I come back into the data set itself, I now have a year month day of week, an hour. So information that I can use if I don't want to apply a filter, be it day of week, the month, keep in mind this month is in numeric and not the text similar to day of week, but we also have hour of day. So we'll get into eventually making a temporal heat map. So high times and uh, time peaks based on the day of the week. With that though, if we hop back into our variable view, you'll see here when I bring this over for the label, each one that we created has that specific label that we're working with. So again, in our syntax editor, you can see what's going on here. So we're computing a new variable based on our specific date year. Uh, we wanna pull that year out based on our incident date. We're gonna label this variable as year of incident date. It's a scale, the format, the width, and then execute runs this for you. So it's pulling that information for it and giving it all the information it needs to run specifically. So with that, this walks you through how it's extracting that information. And you can see here, it just changes based on the built-in wizard function, how this is pulling the X date dot month. So if you wanted to do this for another field, you could do it, change where it's pulling that information from. If you want to label it something else, this is an easy way to start to learn how SBSS is writing or running this type of analysis or this function itself in the background so you get familiar with the coding language, the syntax itself of what it's working with. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. This video was truly just to introduce the date and time uh, wizard itself. Next video is going to get into some of the frequencies now that we have this. What can we do with that and other variables within here. So until next time, take care.